Today we have a tandem, well it's not really a tandem is it? A dual heater? No it's not quite dual, it's um, an active and a passive heater setup because somebody asked. I thought it was a good test to do and I was willing to sacrifice one of these croak heaters in the pursuit of results. This will make more sense if I bring you in to look at things. So what we have is one active heater, which is this one, which still has all of its internal workings and burner, blower, all of the bits, glow plug, whatnot. And we have a, a, a passive. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say a master and a slave. I, I could put it in the title, but I'm going to, I'm old school from, that's master and slave. That's, this is the master here. This is the slave here. This is, yeah, you can call them whatever you want. Primary, active, act, active, passive, whatever. Anyway, so this heater runs and burns. Hot air comes out the hot air end. And then its hot gases, excuse me, a little um, burn chamber. Its hot gases come out of this exhaust pipe and into the air intake of this heater. They then pass through a modified burn chamber. So I took a burn chamber and I cut this top piece off and took off this bit with the glow plug and the pipe so it's just basically a hole and a pipe. I'll put a picture on screen now of uh, the result of the chopping of that off. That's basically just so the hot, go ahead, hot gas goes in the air intake and then goes all the way along the burn chamber and then back round. So it's getting, you know, same as the, the normal burn burner, maximum time in contact with the heat exchanger. There is no intake fan in this one. I've removed the intake fan, but it still has the blower fan. So it can suck air in here, blow over the heat exchanger and put out the warm air. Uh, intake, of, yeah, it's just an intake silencer and the intake of the master. Slave has the exhaust silencer pipe coming out that way. I have sprayed all of the exhausts with the high temperature paint so we can get the thermal imager in. I've also sprayed the ends of each heater with the uh, high temperature paint so we can get a temperature reading that way. I've got my temperature target there so we can measure hot air coming out of here and then we'll measure the airspeed and do kilowatt calculation. Then we'll move over and we'll get the air temperature out of that one, do the same uh, calculations and see what hot air output it is putting. And interestingly, this system just still uses one ECU to run everything. It is the ECU from which I stole out of the Croak toolbox heater as they are no longer in service. Where is the ECU? Not an ECU. Oh, there's a controller there. That's what I was looking for. So one controller, two heaters, and you will notice there is a two core wire joining them together. I have basically just taken the feed from the blower fan in this and tandemed it over to the other side so both fans run at the same speed. Doesn't seem to have bothered the heater at all. It's well within its power output and obviously it's still maintaining RPM because the RPM sensor does the thing. So yeah I suppose I should just fire them up now. So there we go it is started and I'll show you so you can see well at least one fan running. So that fan's spinning can't really see that one but it's doing the thing. Oh that's an odd thing I noticed. Well not odd it makes sense. This puddle here of water I uh, initially was running them upside down just for testing for speed but when I turned it back round upside down water pished out of the exhaust of the slave here so it's been doing a lot of condensing in there of the hot exhaust gases so something works it's it's doing it's been a heat exchanger of some variety right I'm gonna let this run and bring you back when it's hot right okay let's start with the exhausts Right, so the output is, well, it's well over 170 degrees, that was a no-brainer. So, on, in the middle there, that is the output of the master heater. Then that is the input into the slave heater. Oh, it's actually going to switch range for me. Right, how, how hot is the exhaust? Two, 260. Well, 260. 250, 260. And then we switch back down to, oh, it's difficult to get a reading off this real exhaust, but, and then 
less than 80 litres, let it switch back to where's the option now? Right, switch back and the output of that, of the cool exhaust is 50 degrees so we're definitely seeing a reduction the heat's going somewhere right, if it's 50, can I, can I touch it? yeah, can I actually just hold the exhaust with your hand? granted, some of the heat has been transferred there but that's, you can hold that exhaust with your bare hands I mean like you can hold it forever, it's not hot, like, ha, ah, you can hold it a little bit, no, it's, it's literally, you could just hold that for. Right, let's poke into the internals. Inside there, right, over 170 degrees, smashing. And in there, we've got output-ish of... Well, for, for, 44? 44 degrees. Uh, you can definitely see the, that heater is a lot hotter there. This one's, nah, not a lot of warmth, right, okay. So now I will take some readings. I've got the hot readings, now I just need readings. Oh, sorry, I've got master readings, now I just need slave readings. What else was I gonna do? I was gonna quickly check the carbon monoxide, make sure I haven't got any leaks. There is no carbon monoxide leaking out of that one. Oh, that one, and how is the output from the exhaust? Halt your beeping. I've got about 50, 50, 55, 60 parts per million coming out of the exhaust. Oh, it's very, it's very wet. It's very moist. All right, okay, I'm going to take some more readings and then bring you back once I've done that. Right, I have run it. I have run the numbers. I've written them on a bit of cardboard over here. So, the master heater, the one that's actually doing the heating and the burning, and that was giving an output of 3.3 kilowatts of hot air coming out of the hot end and the slave heater was giving a worked out by 0.6 kilowatts of hot air coming out of there so it has recovered 600 watts of heat that was normally going out the exhaust granted there is still hot air going out the exhaust uh, so this works is it worth sacrificing another heater and all the space? Probably not. Probably much better with uh, an actual purpose-made uh, heat exchanger. We will get to that one day, I promise. One one day. As folks have done uh, lots of times out there, if you just take the output from the heater and plumb it through a, a cast iron radiator or a steel radiator, anything like that, you recover a lot more heat because, granted, even a moderately sized uh, heater is I can't, it's like a kilowatt of heat it's able to uh, not emit but produ not produce either but it's, it's um, what's the word I'm looking for? Jesus Christ it's, you know, it's ability to emit well, obviously the bigger the radiator the more kilowatts it can you know, theoretically output small radiator, smaller kilowatts but using the radiator, much better idea Next would be some sort of heat exchanger with fans and extract even like blown forced uh, heat extraction. You'll get even more heat out of it that way. But doing this, I mean, if you've got a spare heater in the space, you will, yes, get more well, free heat because it's not going to exhaust and it's not been wasted. Uh, words of caution. Once you have taken the end off this and you've taken away this seal here and the seal for the glow plug that leaves you with two massive holes in the fan end the exhaust will be coming in and escaping from so you need to block them up properly at the moment I've just taped them up with the um, the aluminium sealing tape but if you were going to do it properly I suggest a high temperature gasket and bits of metal cut to the right shape or even better than that bits of aluminium and weld all the holes up so that you have no chance of the carbon monoxide leaking out of the hot air end because you don't want that you definitely don't that's why I had the tester the carbon monoxide tester test now but because before I sealed the holes up properly I had 14 to 20 parts per million of carbon monoxide coming out of the hot air end and you don't want that currently there's none it's all going out of the exhaust that is my word of caution. If you're going to do that, make sure you seal up all the holes in the burner. That well, I could sh I can show you in the burner. Here's my screwdriver. I've not melted it to anything. 
Also, I wonder if this is the one with... That's not the right size of screwdriver. None of these are technically the right size of screwdriver because this is a garbage... Not even a Jubilee clip. It's just a... It's better off on the floor, that screwdriver. What? Peel this off. Ah, oh, we're not on the right end. Ah, oh, one of these is cast horribly. There is so much flashing left over. It's like razor blades. <sighs> but yeah, so... That hole, you need to seal up. I've just got the glow plug end with two wires stuck in to seal the hole. And that bit there, that is where I that that's where the fuel pipe goes in. That would be where the rubber seal is for the fuel pipe. And it's just taped up to prevent uh, any um, well carbon monoxide. And that's just where the fan joins from another fan taped up to keep the air in, otherwise you get an air leak not. Not a dangerous air leak, it just means you're, what, you're wasting air going out that hole rather than blowing over your heat exchanger. Other than that, it's absolutely standard, it's just missing the blower fan from inside. Right, hopefully this video has answered the question, or that question of, is it worth plumbing a active heater into a passive heater and extracting the heat from its heat exchanger and still using the fan to blow it? No, well not really, I mean you're getting an extra 600 watts, maybe 600 watts is a lot but you'll probably get more if you were to build it using a separate heat exchanger. Now, the main reason I haven't bothered doing any of this is, well, for folk in vans the exhaust is going to be outside, or it should be outside, it should be pointed outside and sealed so that none of the, the carbon monoxide can get back in. If you were to recover the exhaust via a heat exchanger, you've now brought the exhaust inside your van and this and the heat exchanger, and you've now made another point where exhaust gas could leak into your van. It's the same. Every time I see a story about folk camping here, and the headline is two die in tent. So, uh, no, unexplained death. You're like it's carbon monoxide, and then a few days later, you read the paper. Ah, oh, yeah, they had let their camp stove in their tent and carbon monoxide themselves to death at night because they went to sleep with on and they just died in their sleep. So I know while I am a little bit blasé about carbon monoxide, it's because I'm in a big workshop with ventilation and the doors open and I've got one, two, three carbon monoxide alarms surrounding me round about it and I know the dangers. Knowing the danger is part of, you know, if you're aware of the danger, it's less of a danger. If you don't know and you just go to sleep with your gas stove burning and that's it, you carbon monoxide yourself and you die. That's same with this. If you didn't know about carbon monoxide and you thought, oh, I'll just build a little heat exchanger and you end up with a leak, you go to sleep at night and you don't wake up in the morning. So, no, that's why I haven't bothered to do any of this because it's dangerous. Because for camper vans, you've got this mounted basically on a metal floor or pan or whatever it is, it's on the van and the exhaust is outside. It's like 90% of your problems have gone away because your exhaust is now outside of your van. So that's why I don't want to show this too much because I don't want folk building it in their vans and dying basically. But yeah, because if we could I've got heat exchangers here like, you know, uh, intercooler type we could quite you know, easily make up a plumbing system of exhaust but as I say it introduces the risk of death into um, these things and I don't I don't I don't want you to die I want you to come back and watch the videos so I would prefer you all to not die condensation is also a real thing in this I don't I'm kind of tempted to <laughs> I should you not the other day when I was running it upside down I hadn't even ran it long you could hear the water sloshing around inside when I picked it up and that was weird so there also might be a bit of water in my diesel as well but uh, yeah, anyway, so any comments, questions or anything like that about this, please leave them down below and I will try my very best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.